Hello everybody. Today we are going to see how an electromagnetic flow meter works. Here we have a new electromagnetic flow meter. You can see the housing. This housing is, we will remove it later and we will see uh, what we have inside. Let's go inside the flow meter. As you can see here, there is four terminal points. This four points, we will see what it represents after we open the casings of the flow meter. I have one old flow meter here. As we can see, when you remove the casing, we have two coils facing each other and we have two electrodes facing each other. Electrodes direction is perpendicular to the coils direction. We will see later why. First of all, let's have a look on Faraday's first law. This law says that whenever a conductor is placed in a varying magnetic field, an electromotive force gets induced across the conductor. Also, if the magnetic field is constant and the conductor is in motion with respect to the magnetic field, also we will have an induced electromotive force. And this case is what we have in the electromagnetic flow meters, where we have a constant magnetic field and a moving conductor, which is the conductive medium. We have to know that the medium that is flowing in the electromagnetic flow meter should be of conductive type. In case you have distilled water, the electromagnetic meter will not work because there is no conductive ions in the distilled water. However, municipality water or sewage or uh, sea water, all this it will work with the electromagnetic flow meters because they have uh, high conductivity. So let's go back to Faraday's law. Faraday's uh, law says that whenever you have magnetic field and conductive medium in motion with reference to each other then you have induced current or induced electromotive force the induced electromotive force E equals a constant K multiplied by B the magnetic flux which is equal to the number of coils multiplied by the excitation current multiplied by the velocity of the medium multiplied by diameter d of the flow meter to know the direction of the induced current we are going to use Fleming's right hand rule the direction of the induced current is perpendicular to the plane forming the motion and the magnetic field so how this flow meter works first after you excite the coils you create a constant magnetic field when water is uh, stagnant there is no flow the flow meter reads zero because neither the magnetic field is changing nor the water is in motion or the conductive medium it's not in motion with reference to the magnetic field when water starts to flow so the conductive medium is in motion with reference to the magnetic field Fleming's right hand rule this finger for the motion this finger for the magnetic field in this direction so the induced current will be in this direction and that's why the electrodes are in this direction perpendicular to the magnetic field here the flow meter starts giving you uh, readings when the velocity of water increases the electromotive force and thus induced current value will increase proportional to the velocity of the water and therefore the reading will increase proportional to the flow velocity so that's how the flow meter gives you the flow reading K is a known constant, 
d it's known it's the diameter of the flow meter the magnetic flux is known the induced electromotive force is also known and then your flow meter will calculate the mean flow velocity knowing the mean flow velocity your flow meter then calculates the volumetric flow which is equal to the cross-sectional area of the flow meter multiplied by mean flow velocity thank you for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe for more videos